All right, so I want to go ahead and uh, turn it over and introduce uh, Juan and Lucas. So Juan Erquizia uh, has been working in branding for more than 20 years. The first 12 years um, were from a creativity and design perspective, and for the past eight years, he's been the group brand manager at Santander. In this role, he works on the management and implementation of the bank's identity globally, as well as on the strategic management of the brand. He developed part of his professional career in the United Kingdom, where he completed studies in marketing and communication. And presenting with him today is Lucas Machado from Interbrand. And Lucas Machado is an associate design director for Interbrand, has 13 years of experience in branding. He joined Interbrand in 2017 and has worked in identity and packaging projects for clients such as AB and Bev, Eto, Latem Airlines, Netshoes, Samsung, Santander, and Whirlpool. He was also invited by Interbrand Zurich to join forces in Mumbai and build India's biggest telecom brand, Geo. So with that, I will turn it over to Juan and Lucas. Hi, is, is this sound okay? Sound good. Great, excellent. Yes. Uh, so Lucas, if, if that's okay, I'll, I, will, I will start. Um, but I just want to say hi and, and thank you to Monotype for inviting us and thank you also James, that was an inspiring and great presentation. Um, you were talking about the beverages industry while we're a bank, so I, I, I don't think this is getting, uh, well, is, is, I, I think your industry is way more exciting than banking, but uh, um, well, there's, there's interesting things happening here as well. Um, so you just, I, I will be brief, I will give you a, a short introduction before Lucas tells you about the design uh, project that, that we did with Interbrand. Um, well, about Santander, we're a bank, uh, we're a Spanish bank, we were, we were born here in Spain. Actually, Santander is the name of a city in the north of Spain, it's the capital of the region where the bank was, was born. Um, we're an international bank. Um, we do business in mainly Europe and, and, and LATAM. Uh, you, you have some, some, some figures uh, here that, that show the, the size of, 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 of the business. Um, we've, we've, we've been in business for a long time, uh, over 160 years. And um, as you were mentioning, James, it, it's, it's really about how you, you kind of connect with your past. You know, there, there's a lot that has been happening um, in the last few years and, and decades. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's great to work for a company that has managed to, to really adapt to, to things, to really um, kind of be there for their clients, employees, investors and so on uh, and it's really challenging you know to to be part of a company that that that's that's you know that still wants to to kind of be serving these audiences and, and doing doing it um in the right way you know and doing it with authenticity um you can see here some of the of the logos that 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 we've had um and we're gonna we're going to tell you a bit about this last project, this change from this logo that you're seeing and all the brand expression uh, that, that, uh, that we recently did with, with, with Interbrand. Uh, in terms of context, um, there were a few things that, that a few challenges that we, that we were facing. The first one had to do with the, with the financial crisis. It, it, this sounds like it happened ages ago and, and in, in, in a way it, it did because you know, things, things move, move so quickly, but but the implications that, that this crisis had for the sector were very big in terms of reputation, in terms of, um, of revenues, mainly, mainly in Europe, with interest rates being extremely low, also with um, regulation. So all these things have somehow stayed with us, you know, and has, have, has made things a bit difficult for the, for the industry. Another thing has to do, uh, another challenge has to do with uh, the digital transformation. Again, this is like, okay, digital transformation, this sounds like an old thing, but we, we, we're a retail bank. We, we, we've always served our clients through our 
branches mainly, physical space where people used to come and requested things that had to do with their financial needs. And, and this digital transformation has to do a lot also with, with our culture, you know. So we're, we're really moving forward with this and, it, and it's, 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 it's really great. I mean, nowadays it's impossible not to be digital, but, but this was a great challenge for us and it's been for the last few years. And, and the last external factor I would like to highlight has got to do with players, you know. I'm referring to, to, to small players such as Fintex, which I think they're doing great work and offering great things to, 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 to people around the world. So, so, so that's great. Also, also big techs, you know, like Amazon or, or Apple, you know, uh, and, and, and all these, these new players are challenging, but at the same time, they've been an opportunity for banks. You know, they've really pushed us to move, to move the head quickly and do things right. So, so, so that was a challenge, but I see that a, a bit of a, a, as a, a, in a way as an opportunity as well. And apart from these external challenges, we had some internal things happening, which were, we, we, we can call them challenges. I, I see them more of, as opportunities, which, which were uh, a new CEO that joined uh, five years ago. She was coming from the UK and she obviously had a, a new vision, um, different way of, of seeing the banking industry that her successor had. Um, she wanted to, implement and in fact implemented a new strategy. So with all these things that I've just mentioned, it was it was obvious that that the brand and the way it's pressed had to be looked at, had to be revised uh, to accompany this, this new strategy and vision. And that's when we appointed Interbrand to to help us and do this, you know, and, and, and help us understand how we could make the brand expression relevant in a digital kind of era and how we could retain those elements that were really key to our history. And that was, that was in, in rough terms, the brief, you know. I'm going to go through a couple of elements that are really rooted in our culture because those were, were key. One has to do with the idea of, of prosperity. You know, this, this, this is something that our founders in this small city of, of Santander that I mentioned over 160 years ago had in their minds, you know, when they started the bank, you know, they wanted to help local businesses to, to export their products and services to other countries in Europe. So this idea of helping businesses and, and helping people prosper, you know, to, to, to really achieve goals and, and, and projects was, was key to the bank and is still key. Is still key for us, you know. So, so that was something that Interbrand had to keep in mind. Uh, another thing has to do with the way we want to do things. This, this, this has to do with with being simple, personal, and fair in everything that we do. That that should be reflected in 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 the way we behave as employees, in the way we treat our clients, in the way we design our products and services, and so on. And last but not least, it's, it's this idea of how a retail bank can move forward and become an, an open financial platform. And, and this is where we're at. This is ambitious, but this is what we're working on at the moment as a bank. And, um, and, and again, the work that Interbrand did was key to really build the assets, the visual or the identity assets that we needed to to really transform the key touch points and communications that, 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 that the bank uses on, on their everyday activities and, and so on. And now I'm, I'm going to pass it on to Lucas so he can tell you about the, um, all, this, all the design work that, that they did for us. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks Juan for introducing. Um, now I'm going to jump in to the visuals to show what was the challenge for Inkerbrand. Because as Juan said, uh, they had a new strategy and the challenge for us was how can we reflect this new strategy into visuals, into a new uh, brand expression. And we started with the, actually with the logo type because this is a really well-known brand uh, across the world, but in Spain, it's, 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 it's really, it's a huge brand. It's really, uh, it's a really strong brand. And we, we for, with that, 
we develop some scenarios to understand how far can we uh, evolve and update this uh, visual expression. We didn't want to lose any heritage, any anything that, that any brand value. So we started with the symbol with the flame and we draw some, some scenarios. Okay, we could refine this uh, symbol, we could update it, or we could even break out from it. We could go for a complete uh, evolution of this identity. Uh, it, it seems like really simple in this slide, right? With just uh, three options of logos, but it wasn't that. We had a lot of uh, back and forth discussions. We were working together with Juan's team at Santander, and we all agreed that the brand has a lot of strength. Uh, it was really recognizable, the, the flame as it is, it's, uh, it's a really strong asset. That's why we decided that we would focus on a new refinement for this brand. And we could leave the, uh, the bigger changes for the other brand assets. So I'm just going to show like a, in a kind of a technical way how we actually refine this brand for a digital environment. So starting with the logo, the flame, it was really organic and was not working really well on screens, especially for mobiles, also for in reduction for fab icons. So we did a grid, an underlying grid with these uh, perfect triangles. I know that usually these uh, underlying grids are just sitting there to show off, but I guarantee and I start you that we actually use this grid to build up the symbol and we also use this uh, grid to build up other brand elements, and I'm going to show you. So we started with this grid, we then started drawing some lines and oval shapes inside of it, combined with circles, and then we just fill it in. And this is the refined symbol. And again, it might, it might seem like, okay, that's really simple, it's really easy to do, but it took us almost uh, a year to develop this, this whole, uh, this whole design, this whole layout, because we were discussing about how far should we uh, evolve this brand. So in a comparison way, you can see that now we have a more uh, equal uh, balance between the white and the red. Uh, as you can see, the counter space goes more towards the bottom. So when we reduce the symbol, it, it uh, behaves better and it's more uh, visible into visual, uh, into uh, mobile screens and into more, uh, smaller approaches and applications. And with that, this is where Monotype comes in. We partner with them to create the, uh, the word mark and the letters for the, for the Santander logo. And they use the symbol, the details of the shape, these curves, as the, as these points, and this, as you can see in the S shape, the terminal, the endings, has these curves. So it was all inspired by the, the symbol we, we developed. And not only of, with the curves, but also, for example, on the A, as you can see on the bottom, this detail is the same as the, the tip of the flame. So the whole word mark was inspired by the symbol. And we did a lot of experimentations to see, should we use a single story A, a double story A with no shoulders? Uh, and we did a lot of, uh, experimentations and uh, trials. Uh, we were printing everywhere, uh, looking into far distance, closer, just to understand which was the uh, best option. Until we finally achieved the, the final result, uh, we, we went with this uh, open A, it was more visible into, for screens. And for the top of the word mark, we, we removed the, the, the shoulders, giving this uh, a small, something more smooth to the eye. So this was the, the final uh, word mark. Uh, it works great uh, either um, uh, with uh, red backgrounds, white backgrounds, uh, positive and negative applications. And we, we also developed the complete alphabet for Santander logo because Santander is always expanding, uh, getting to new countries. And sometimes when they merge with some uh, banks, sometimes they need to add their names for, for a while, or sometimes they, they incorporate that name for, for life. So th this is why we needed to uh, develop the whole alphabet. As you can see here, we have Santander, Santander Rio, Santander Group. And not only we develop the, the typeface for the logo, we also develop a, the logo uh, light version because Santander has a lot of sub-brands 
and they are always creating uh, new ones uh, for new uh, new opportunities. That's why it was really important to develop these uh, typeface as well. We do also develop a system that it's a responsive system because nowadays, before Santander didn't have any uh, like a vertical version. So the logo was struggling into the smaller spaces. And right now they have this really horizontal uh, version. They have the other one that's a vertical one. And now they can even uh, sign uh, just with the flame. So they have the flame, the bar, and the name of the sub-brand. As you can see, we help them to, to establish like a rule and organize all the sub-brands. So you can see for master brand, you have the extended versions, then you have the compact one and the high impact that we called is just the flame, the symbol that uh, with uh, research, we discovered that it's, it's a really uh, recognizable uh, symbol. So, this is the, the work we did with Monotype, the Sentinel logo typeface. And then we moved to the other uh, brand assets. And we, we decided Santander needed also a typeface on its own because it was in so many countries, they had so many uh, different languages and they needed to unify their, uh, their speech, their voice. That's why we created also the Santander headline. It, so this typeface, it's uh, lighter than the, and then the logo will have different uh, X height also. And it's closer to the, to the Santander logo uh, aspect. But we also created the Santander text for, of course, for a smaller text. And as you can see, it has a different A. So it's a, a double story A. It has more space between uh, letters. And the last project we did was a Santander micro for uh, smaller applications like uh, the app and also for legal text, so it's on sm uh, really small uh, usage. As you can see, the difference between them is the spacing, uh, the, the, the biggest uh, difference between them. Uh, they have, of course, for the smaller sizes, we were uh, spacing the, the letters uh, even more. Another example of application in this piece, you can see the logo, of course, with the Santander logo typeface. Then we have the Santander headline, then the Santander text, and at the end, the Santander micro. So in one piece of communication, you, we use four different typefaces. They are all similar. They are all uh, from the same family. And it's really helped us to, to unify uh, Santander language, not only for print, but also for the digital environment. And nowadays, uh, Santander has its own voice, its own uh, way to, to communicate with uh, their customers with their own uh, typeface. So moving on from typeface, we also changed uh, something their whole um, color palette, because as you can see right now, there was a lot of usage of, uh, of reds. So it was kind of dark uh, palette, and we moved to something more fresh, something with uh, more usage of a white. We also incorporate uh, this light blue that we call the sky color. To, to give some uh, contrast with this uh, and balance with this white, the use of, of, of white. But we also understand that the red color is important. I mean, in these applications, you can see a lot of white in the background, but for other uh, like illustrations, the, the photos, we kept the red element as a, something for stand out on these uh, communication. And now I'm showing again the, the sentence there, the, the, uh, the symbol with the grid because like I said before, the grid was important to develop also other elements for the brand, other brand essence. So here we used not only the angle, the 60 degree angle, but also the, the shapes from the symbol to create the Santander illustration style. And in this style, you can see the angles here, the shapes, everything really geometric. And we can also adapt the color palette uh, for the, the fine audience we're talking to. As Santander is in different uh, countries, we can always adapt with the local culture. So with this uh, illustration style, we can have a, a really broad sense of communication. We also develop a, a whole range of objects, uh, landmarks. So we develop a really uh, big uh, library with a, a lot of uh, illustrations. And they can always adapt the colors of the, the even skin colors, they can use uh, change the hair colors and also uh, clothing and everything. 
So it's a really flexible uh, illustration style. Coming back to the grid again, we also, based on the grid, we develop a pictogram system based on the word mark as well. So all the, the drawings here has everything to do with the Santander word mark that Monotype developed. And these uh, icons, these pictograms, we can also use in, with outline, in, with strokes, but also with, uh, with field colors. So it's not only pictograms, we can also use these as illustrations. So as, as you can see here, a more complete uh, uh, example of uh, pictograms. I know that Juan's team already uh, expanded these uh, pictograms. I believe they have more than uh, 200 or 300 uh, pictograms right now. The photographic style we also uh, changed. Now we're, we're focusing on people that are always wondering, uh, they want to prosper because one of the promise of Santander Bank is to help uh, to business and people to prosper. So we wanted to capture this essence of people like wondering what else can they do, what else they, they can create and how the bank, the bank is there to support them. So here's a more uh, broad example, a mood board with all those uh, pictures where you have, uh, as you can see, that, that sky blue tone is always present because we also have the, the, these red uh, highlights in all the, the photos and always with people uh, wondering. It, and we, when they are together, they are always uh, creating. And one uh, really nice aspect of the photos, we also use this uh, uh, style of, the usage, the usage of stairs here is to, to make some reference of this idea of uh, pr prospering, right? So uh, Santander is there to help you to, to go to the next step, next level. So with this idea of the, the stairs, this helped us to create also the, the layout system. Because if Santander is here to, to help people and business prosper, the idea of prosperous is like moving something up, something to the next uh, step. So as you can see in this uh, short uh, clip we did, this is the layout system with those uh, rectangles. Uh, one is always shift uh, uh, to the up uh, part. So we can, it's a really flexible system where you can use on the bottom part, on the top of the, the communication. And it, it serves to, to separate photo from the content and so on. So it's a really flexible uh, system with this idea of prospering with a single step. So here, uh, more uh, of the a summary, a general look to this uh, layout system. As you can see, focusing on people, people wondering, uh, you have the stairs, you have the typeface, you have the logo. So this is a, a more broad uh, uh, view and overview of the, the whole visual new brand expression we did for Santander. And these are already uh, rolling out. We already have a lot of communications going out to the street with these, uh, with these stairs, with this new typeface, with a new logo type, new color palette. And also something that really was really important for Santander was the digital environment. So this, uh, this layout system we developed with the stairs also work for animations, as you can see here on web banners. And the, uh, what, what Juan was mentioning before that the digital challenge was really important for Santander because uh, more than now, more than ever, people are, uh, the customers are interacting with brands on a digital environment. And especially right now with this uh, COVID-19, with the pandemic, then the quarantine, people are interacting way more. Uh, I believe even uh, Juan was mentioning before that uh, right now there's no, um, there was no uh, brand branches open. So people that wanted to interact with the bank, they had to go to the, to the app, they had to go to the website. And we were really glad that we did this project before because the Santander brand was ready for it. They, had a, they have a um, new visual system, they have a typeface that works really well for applications, for the website. And this really helped on the, for creating a brand value for Santander. And uh, from interbrand side, that's what we want. We always want to create a brand value and help uh, brands to, to take these, what we call an iconic move. So they, this is what the way that we help uh, Santander to give this uh, step further evolve their uh, visual identity. Now people, when they look to Santander, they understand, okay, this is a digital bank. They, it is not, it's not like an old bank 
an offline and analog bank. And with this new visual expression, we believe that we delivered that and uh, Santander team is also delivering with new platforms and uh, we believe that, that the project is really uh, concise in that way. And now Juan, you can uh, also talk about a, a little bit of what Santander Bank is doing to activate this new strategy, this new positioning. So please yep. go ahead. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, just to wrap up, yeah, a few a few ideas or things that we've been doing. What, what Lucas has presented has become, let's say, the, the fundamentals for all the UX teams uh, working on digital products. Um, and, and, and that, that's been like key for them to, to, to work on components, modules, and so on that, that has helped to speed up and increase the quality of, of, of the products that we're using to, and the channels that we're using to, to, to really serve clients and so on. Uh, these are some examples of, 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 of things that we've done recently. One is a new way of, of, of branches, what we call the work cafes, where you actually I mean, you don't, obviously you don't need to be a client to walk into a work cafe. You can just get there, you know, connect to the Wi-Fi and just work and you can be helped with financial needs. You know, it's, it's a new thing. This is something that started in Chile um, and we've got a, a, around 100 of them in, in the world now. Also new things in terms of sponsorship. We've always been connected to sports. Uh, we kind of moved into football and this is something that happened um around a year and a half as well you know so this has to do with the new vision and and how to really connect in in a in a more fresh way in a way with with our, our audiences also an example here of urban mobility you know with the with the bikes in london and and, and this is just some examples that that somehow reflect the the transformation of the bank There's, there is a lot needs to be done and and, and 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 you know times are challenging but we're really really happy uh, these are also examples on 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 services that we're using or that we're offering uh, around the world uh, that that kind of connect with this this idea of open financial platform and um, this these this have been launched in in in, in the uk brazil um some of them in different parts of Europe. So this is just reflecting the importance of digital and how we're kind of shifting the way we we serve clients. It, it's also important to mention that this 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 balance between digital and physical for us is, is very important. You know because uh, it's true that digital was was key and we had a, a great focus there. But it's really about again not disconnecting with your essence. You know and and. Who knows? Maybe in 50 years' time we, we will have no branches. But, but for us, you know, that connection with people through a physical space is, the space is really important because it's really rooted in our way of understanding banking, and 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 that's it from 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 my side. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we, we still have like a video that shows the, the whole typeface, but I I believe we, we already. Uh, past our time. I don't know, uh, Alice, how, how are we? <laughs> yes, I think we're, um, we're coming right up to a break, but I did, um, first of all, I want to thank you, Juan and Lucas, for this great presentation. Uh, really exciting to see how the Santander brand has evolved. Uh, so I know um, we are going to go to a break, but I wanted to just have time to ask you one or two questions. Um, so the first one, um, you've talked a lot about how digital has been an important part of this brand strategy and uh, perhaps more critical than ever today. And so I'm curious at what point digital came into the conversation uh, when you started the rebrand project? Was it something you were thinking about right from day one or is it something that evolved over time? It was, it was, it was really part of the brief. You know, we, we, we knew that we were a bit yeah. behind uh, our, I mean, talking about the logo, but the, all our brand expression was really based on the brief and mortar sort of vision, you know, because that's where we were coming from. And we, we knew we needed that. We also, we were going to heavily invest in internal teams of digital designers to, to really speed up in terms of implementing new digital products. So it was, it was, it was, it was crucial uh, and it was part of the beginning. It's true that, that we learned and, and somehow um, refined or changed some, some bits in terms of what we were expecting, but, but digital was, was definitely 
a key part of, 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 of the brief, yeah. Okay, great. So we have a few other questions coming in for you and I would encourage everyone in the audience that if you do have a question, go ahead and submit it either to everyone or directly to the chat admin. And Juan and Lucas will gather up the questions and certainly have you respond to those directly. 